Now, I think when I, you know, come on here and I'm like, hey, you have all the information that you need at the beginning. Like, what what is going on? Like, why are you fucking it up so bad? It comes from a place of like, I get being off slightly. I get going into like the final two weeks and you're like, hey, like we need to dig a little bit. Like you're, you're not where you need to be. What I don't get is being off like seven to 10 pounds. That's what really irks me because like, hey, I coach, like I, I get it. There are some weeks where I'm, I'm exhausted and I'm like, yo, like, okay, this client, I need to like dig back into previous responses because I, I'm not quite sure where we're at. And I'm like, okay, let me reorient, make sure I have all of the necessary information. This is okay. This is what we talked about previously. That happens. I think if I had to theorize, and it's not to say this is what's happening, but I think oftentimes there is a laziness that comes with coaching um, because you're just like, okay, well, this client didn't make progress. So all I need to do is just tell them to like be, be adherent, just be on plan, just do the things that I'm telling you to. And that's like the easy, easy example is like when someone's not adherent. Uh, but what about like when someone just didn't lose weight? And I think like looking back at my prep in 21, there were a lot of weeks uh, because it was the same. It was about 20 pounds ish, give or take. And, um, if I have these correct, which I'm, I'm, I'm open to being wrong. Uh, the real, like the dieting started sometime like middle to end of February, maybe like in the beginning of March. And then junior USA's was May 10th, May 15th, somewhere around that. So it's like, there was a good amount of time to lose weight, but not at the rate that I would need to, like I would have needed to lose like two pounds a week. So a thousand calorie deficit a day. And there were definitely some weeks where weight wasn't dropping. And I remember in maybe it was like end of March, beginning of April, there was a point where I talked to my coach and I was like, yeah, like I am a little nervous. Like I want to make sure that I'm ready for this show. Like I'm putting everything I have into it. This is the hardest prep I've done. Like it's the leanest I've gotten. And like, just, okay. Sidebar. If you've never been stage lean, if you are trying to achieve a level of conditioning that is foreign to you, understand that that is going to require, and I'm not going to say it's going to require a new version of you. It's like, no, I'm not saying that. It's going to require tolerating a level of discomfort that you probably can't imagine. Um, Because ultimately that's going to look different for you, your situation, how you manage that fatigue. Um, But for me at the time, like, I mean, a lot of the stress, the stress itself, like I was in online classes, work was really light at the time, but like at the time the stress was all intrinsic. Like I was creating that stress and it came from the pressure that I was putting on myself. And this is something like, I I know a lot of clients I work with, they come to me, they're like, I, I just... I don't know how to manage my stress like externally cool that's one thing but what's happening internally that's just how I've always been I don't know any other way looking back I got much leaner the following year much much leaner and and yes it was largely in part to giving myself enough time so I had wiggle room when weeks didn't pan out the way I hoped like I didn't see the rate of change I was I was aiming for but what also really like made a difference was managing that intrinsic stress so really getting clear on like okay this is self-created this is something that is in a way almost indulgent because it's going to allow me to sit in this feeling ruminate stay here not not consider the effects of sitting in this feeling and it's not one of those things where I'm like oh you know just like disassociate just like avoid what what it is you're experiencing. I'm not saying that. I don't think that's helpful. Um, at the time, I kind of did. But really, really what, what helped me um, manage that stress was considering, okay, I have this plan. This plan is very objective. It is, it is um, backed by a lot of logic. I've gone through and I've considered, okay, what if I don't lose at the rate that I need to? So I have additional weeks built in. So the worst, worst case scenario is if I continue to hit a stall, I have these other tools. I have increases in my non-androgenic PEDs that I can, that, that I can, you know, escalate. I have the ability to escalate cardio. I have the ability to pull food down further. And it came honestly from starting that 2022 prep and being very clear that like, hey, I have 
an objective to meet this target rate of change every week. And if I don't hit that, sure, there's the chance that that is like an artificial inflation and like it's my period, whatever. Um, but it's also possible. There is, it's not, it's not impossible that I'm just not in a big enough deficit. Now, knowing that, knowing that the first week and saying that like I didn't lose at the rate I was hoping to, it pulled food down. And I know I talked about this like the last episode as well, but like I was like, I, this this is uncomfortable. This is uncomfortable because I have 20 weeks, like roughly maybe even longer. I have 20 weeks or so left of this prep. And if I'm already pulling food down, like what is that going to leave me with? But But what I did do is ensure that food wasn't my only tool. I didn't pull food down to 1100. I didn't have cheat meals or like untracked meals in place so that like, okay, like, yeah, you're at like 13, 1400, but at the same time, you're undoing that deficit with these free meals that are supposed to, you know, be used to drop off dietary fatigue. I made sure as much as I could that everything was accounted for or could be accounted for. 